got me on school bus. And um, bitches thought I was a race car driver. I go back there and pick them kids up. Some of the parents say, I don't know, I want my kid get on that bus or not. <laughs> I'm coming in that bitch with that bitch to the bottom. <laughs> I burned a tank of gas, I burned up about two tank of gas a day. <laughs> it fucked up when they told me, said, wherever you go, you take the bus with your shit. I'll be all on the block and everything with that motherfucker. I'm busy. <laughs> you know, you know wherever I get in with some with some gas on them, I got that radio up there on the ass thump. Huh? It's your stop podcast, T H I S Y O U R S T O P podcast. I don't know why I just banged the bell like that. <laughs> Such a just like that on all social media platforms, especially YouTube. I don't care what nobody say. I'm telling you, it is important. Please do it. It takes two seconds to subscribe and like. It's free also. And I swear to God, I'm Machine Gun Johnny, Johnny Tsunami, Johnny Winfrey, Johnny Jesse Raphael. Anything else, you can call me what you want, but do not call me for fronts. And then... You already know what it is, man, and what it is. Ooh. Fuck with the podcast, man. This shit stop. Podcast, look us up, man. Fuck with us on YouTube. Like she said, we need them likes and subscribe. So definitely when you click on the joint, like the joint. If you took in anything from the joint, don't cost you much just to like it. You know what I'm saying? So... Know that when you clicking in these videos and clicking out, make sure you stop by, man. Hit the like button on some of these shits. You know, it help people get into the rotation. And we all fighting to get into the rotation, so that just helps us out. Literally and figuratively, huh? You dig? Get into the rotation, Handy. And shout out the merch. You see it. You dig? Told you more merch on the way. Coming soon. We in the works of it, trying to put it together. Look out. We should have some hoodies while it's still cold out. So look out for the hoodies, man. You know, you know, it's the mean streets of Boston, so it's gonna be cold for a grip. You don't get good weather until damn near June, July. Nah, we've been getting good weather in like March. Yeah. Last year, March was crazy. It was wild. It was wild. March niggas had wife beaters on. <laughs> oh, <they> didn't. Wow. <laughs> you always gotta force something. Um, Definitely April. Yeah. When we got the spot on calendar, I think on. We was on, outside crazy. Yeah, we was, out was outside crazy. Think right. about it way before the summer. We was outside. We outside off the porch and on it. And they, we have a few birthdays. You want to hear them? Right. Don't matter. I'm going to say them anyway, honey. Um, Mahershala Ali with his big fine self. Um, Amber Riley. You know who that is? Do you remember Single White Female, that movie? Damn. Anyway, single black female. I, know Rose is. I bet you do. Um, That's all right. You can't forget. What about the bald head? I can't do it. Have you seen her with a wig though? Still can't do it. That's what I'm, I'm saying. So she don't look. Her bald. That's what I'm saying. So you don't, you don't count in this conversation. Um, but I do wish um, I could have seen her when she was in a club though. Like when she was really moving into the bag, I would that would have been a sight to see. You know what I'm saying? All head and all. Um, yeah, because Amber was like the first one really pushing that shit like publicly, loudly. Um, and I respect that walk. about it. You know what I'm saying? Um, like I said, I probably would have stuck. I just don't. I was fucking with each other long. I don't know. I ain't saying that. Um, y'all chicks with low cuts ain't got action, but I'm telling you, shh, you better play ball. Cause they, what does that mean? <laughs> you better you better go hard, cause I'm telling you it ain't easy with me. It ain't shit easy. Well, mm. zip it. Is it. Amber Riley, she is in single black female, a remake. I know you hate remakes. It was on Lifetime. She was the evil twin. But anyway, shout out to her. Um, Birdman put some respect on my name. Birthday. Um, you know who else? LeVar Burton. Shout out Birdman. You already know. You watched Reading Rainbow when he was a kid? Nah. You know what it is. Yeah. Machine Gun Johnny was on Reading Rainbow. No one believes me. I used to go to Metco. They came and filmed. I was in the first grade. I'm going to find that tape, but I was on Reading yeah. Rainbow. Um, oh, 
Happy birthday, Meg the Stallion. Nice. Real hot girl shit. Um and real, real rat girl shit. Real hot girl shit. Real rat girl ah. shit. Niggas, excuse my French. Can't stand a big, pretty. Oh, she's pretty. She's big, big. she's nice. She would have never told on um, my homie. She would uh, have never Why did I? I walked right like, into the shit. Like, like, I walked like, right she into died. it. She died. I ain't going to take nothing from Meg. Like, music, Even before Kelly. that, brothers nah, really she was, wasn't. She was tough before that. That's why I understood homie fucking with her. But it's like, once you a traitor, you always a traitor. No matter who you move on to, all you're going to do is do some trade shit to them. I'm sorry. You know what I'm if saying? Like, you did something, don't get, don't do something to get told on. I don't know. We don't, I mean, to this day, we still don't know what he did. That's a fact. I don't even think Meg know what he did. Congrats to Simone Biles and Jonathan Owens. Um, he plays for the Texans. He's up there with it. And Simone Biles, she's the GOAT. <clears throat> they got engaged. You know, Valentine's Day type of one, two. If you got married or engaged, would you do it like on a holiday, on like some wicked private, like we're going to dinner at the crib? Like, no, for what? It's already a holiday. Why wouldn't you make your own day? Oh, my God. We agree on something. Like, <laughs> I'm not about to be sharing all day, especially no like wedding day, no shit like that. Fuck, mm -hmm. no. Not even on my birthday. No birthdays, I'm not no chilling holidays. Right on my birthday. So damn sure ain't doing that on my B-Day. Shout out to all the bitches that know me. No, nigga, I'm never with no bitches on my B-Day. It's a nigga occasion. We going hard all yeah, week. It's a real sausage fest. It is. So no holidays, no birthdays. Don't, if I got married, do not propose to nobody on my wedding day. Do not. Do Gang it. shit. Don't do Shout it. Shout out to my son. I think my son and um, his little brother share the same birthday. I know that's Stop. crazy. All right. Lil Dre B Day coming up on the 26th. Shout Nigga, out to 22. Ooh, you get old. That's crazy. 22. Who the fuck ever would have thought? I mean, I know it makes sense, but when you hear the words 22, that sounds. Yeah, loud. that's your sound. <laughs> you got a 22 year old kid. Uh, You're mad old. That's why you're starting to act old. Rickety and crotchety. No bullshit. Get into my <laughs> old man swag. No bullshit. Fuck that young bag. You got to jump out that. And I be telling black men too, man. That's something that we got to do. We got to start knowing how to jump out that young man bag. Like, it's cool. We don't want it. But, you know, um, up until a couple months ago, I had to realize, like, um, beauty come with age. Understanding come with age. Knowledge come with age. Like, you know, there's certain things that... You know, like they say, like, um, fine wine. You know what I'm saying? Like, you move gracefully. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't have to move all hard. And, you know, and that's where I'm getting away. I don't have to move them ways because I am a grown man. Like, it ain't like I'm a young man no more. I'm a young dude. Like, so there's no reason for me to act like a young dude. You know what I'm saying? Or try to have them traces of a young dude. I need to have traces of a grown man. You said leave the true religions in the iceberg No at bullshit. Home. Wow. Like, I think, <laughs> um, I think for black men, and I think a lot of it has to do with black women because black women always saying how they love a younger man or you know what i'm saying even older black men i love a younger female so you so think they're it, trying to chase the so i what think they it, think the other person wants no i think it's it it fucks it up for black women and black men to grow the fuck up because we're still thinking of what a person want that young tender and that ain't it you know what i'm saying like you have to be because i tell people motherfuckers go for the people that are more stable you know, um, have their life in control. You know, their life look like it's blossoming. You know, um, I've been young before. Shit, when what? you were young, you ain't got shit going on. Even when you was young, you was old. No bullshit. <laughs> but it's like when you young, you, you know, um, your body's naturally right for a man and a woman. Like, what? it's a lot of shit you don't even got to worry about, like, as a young nigga, you still can run and jump fucking fences eight feet high, nigga, and just keep running. Like, a lot of shit I'm not doing right now. Even if I look at a piece of bread that's like three pounds on my midsection. Bullshit, midsection. like, now nah, I remember that, and I always say that, like, and that's what make me more get into the, you got to take care of yourself. 
the older you get to keep that feeling because you can keep that feeling like that i don't feel old and sluggish like you just gotta eat better you gotta work out you gotta really take care of yourself and i think that's something we need to preach more with like you know getting older um taking care of ourselves better especially black men we never go to the fucking hospital you know what I'm saying? Sure. And I think that's something we need to do more to do. could be falling off. Yeah, I was one of them niggas like, don't give a fuck what's wrong. Venus could be falling off. I got to be about to die to be like, yo, that's why anytime I used to tell my mom, I need the hospital, she knew that shit was serious. It wasn't even nothing to play. That mean, we got to go in the next 10 minutes. Like, I always was to, to wait until shit got infected. <laughs> And like, and then I'm nah. Let's go Feverish. to the hospital. Like, wow. To be septic shock. Um, I was always like that though. Like, that, but that's generational. You know that, right? What? Um, us being like not trusting of you know hospitals and medical staff. That that goes back to our forefathers. Um, that's another. That's why I say a lot of things with me when it came to um, like my whole life being young, I wanted bread. You know, you always want bread to improve your life. and But then I started as, like, the last couple of years really seeing what money is and what money can do. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like um, you have to get yourself in position to get a doctor, to get a dentist. You know what I'm saying? To get a motherfucker you trust, not a motherfucker they just assigned you out of the hospital. This is yours. Like, we the only people that get treated like that. We are, but you know what else? Everybody else picked their doctor. Um, sorry. I grew up in um, poverty middle class. Not ashamed of it. But even then, you do get to choose your provider. You no, definitely do. But you don't. If you go to the ER, no. But if you go to the doctor on a regular basis. No, but you basis, don't get it how people get it. You know, and I um, always felt like my life should, you know, and not even because I came from the hood or nothing. You know, me just being who I am, life come with luxury, you know. So I always felt like I should have, um, say, like with this COVID, I should have had a doctor that could come to the crib, give me the shot if I wanted Like it. private You know what I'm saying? Uh, like practice. private affairs, like keeping your shit private in your home. You know what I'm saying? I mean, of course, private care, like you said, costs more, and it is better. That's like going to private school. It's But, like, better. dental, all that. Like, you know, even, um, I always felt like that, too. Like, um, please believe, crab will have a chef. Like, it will be a chef at my gate. Like, I just think that's dope. That's elegant. That's fire. Like, you know what I'm but saying? But you're not much of a cook, so, I mean... Pretty sure you could get by if you wanted to. No, nah, but even but. if um, even if like I dealt with a shorty and she was crazy, with could we still go and get a? Because I just think that I think I deserve that luxury. What about I, nannies? I would have a nanny. Really? I was yeah. thinking you would say no if you were married and well off. I would think that you, just knowing your personality, we grew up together. If y'all haven't figured out by now, on these hundred shows, that you would prefer your nah, wife nanny to be really got to be NDA. Vet in this bitch, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, we got a vet of really a NDA. She signed in papers. Like, it just wouldn't be to come through you to any, yeah. no. Like, it would be damn near weeks. People coming through, how you feel about her, like me. But I'm not going to lie. Like, I wouldn't take the young, cute girl. Like, you know what I'm saying? With me, I'm going for the grandma feeling. I would say, like, auntie pushing grandma because you want her to be around for a long time. You get a grandma, she might. Expire. Nah, grandma's ain't expiring quick. Grandma's is living. But I, I feel that's where the nurturing come from. So mm -hmm. with me, I know me. I just think like that. Maybe it ain't the right way, but I do. I would think more of that. Like, even if I had a chef, it would have to be a woman. It would have to be an older woman. I really wouldn't want no younger woman making my food. Even with that, it had to be like a motherly aunt, grandmother type cook like you know what i'm saying it couldn't be like straight out of culinary school like even though you can cook but you want that season and i don't even want um i don't even want no bitch around me i gotta worry about busting her down or she want me to bust her down like i don't, so you don't want think that. an older woman might not want you to that's why i'm saying it would take that because i would definitely want somebody very professional like very you don't have a time of coming off key like, you don't never have a time of speaking to me like we're friends. Like, we're never going to develop that relationship. So you would be concerned for some weird-ass reason you got a younger peer 
nanny or, or chef that you would be concerned about you might fall into the coochie? I feel we we might fall into the coolness. Okay, okay. okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But you being young, cute, yo, what up, boom, boom, boom. Like you heard that lady's Wu-Tang? And by the time I really was to find a wife, I wouldn't want no shit to wear. My wife would have to worry about this bitch, like, if she leave. Like, you know what I'm saying? I would want my wife to leave and feel comfortable. Same way if we got an older meal, I would want to be able to leave the crib and not think when I leave this nigga smacking my wife shit around. You know what I'm saying? Like, because that's what happened. No bullshit. Not smacking it around. Because I could tell niggas, man, all of us that came up really fucking like when you get older, that shit ain't heavy. So, nigga, I know I'm not going to be bending that bitch over no every night. That shit out the way. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I got mad other shit to do than me thinking about fucking you every night. Like, we going, but it ain't going to be, no. And at some point, it is just going to be holiday shit. Mm. It's your birthday. Mm. Bend mm. over. I don't celebrate Valentine's Day, but bend over. <laughs> Fuck it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, nah, nigga. Nah. You would not go into no routine like that. I can see everyone has a life and they're busy and we're trying to make a home, but holiday sex? Stop. I, I know me. I have um, no bullshit shit. is so real to me now. Like, it consume my brain. Like, pussy be the furthest thing from my brain. Like, real shit. It doesn't like, have to rule your world, but I'm talking about if you have, if you have a wife, like... Not if I could do business with a woman and get the pussy, I would take the business. That's understandable. Please. Like, I'm not more into the, like, you know what I'm saying? I would rather her fuck one of my mans, and then I'll be able to get some bread. <laughs> like, I'm kind of cool with the, you know, wanting to fuck the bitch and all that shit. Like, I think at some point, that's what I'm saying, when you get your head on right, I think you grow out of a lot of that shit and not grow out of it to where... You don't want it. It's just not important. It's not no shit you looking for. It's not like every day, yo, I got to be in some pussy. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, I don't even really want want a woman like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I want her to be content waking up just giving dick sucks and being out. You know what I'm saying? Like, That's still yeah. sexual activity, so... Head. Uh, sometimes you gotta relieve a nigga. You okay. know what I'm saying? But yeah, you should so know when to relieve a nigga. I'm about to say, regular head is cool, but not intercourse. Nah, like on the regular. Nah, head gonna come like not regular too. Sometimes like I don't want that shit. And women you don't know how to take that when you don't want no head. What your boy say? Your favorite one of your favorite rappers? You want some head? Nah, babe. How it go? Oh, um, <laughs> I forgot. I know what you talking about. He is about hilarious. Too. Re- she Rico. said you want your dick suck. I said I'm fine, babe. I'm fine. Babe. <laughs> Try to make a hundred thousand for the. Yeah, nah, he went crazy on that. But that's how real niggas. Like, cause motherfuckers is really looking at it like, once you are moving, you don't have a time to plant yourself. Cause that shit could be it. We don't watch people do that. Fuck with that little shit, man. The course of the world changed. Now whatever you was doing, it ain't going no more. Now what? You know what I'm saying? And with me, it's not like I feel if you fuck with me, then you fuck with me more than some dick. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't yeah, feel you could marry me for the gist of that. No, it's, so, more than, be... it's more than that, but you want to have good sexual chemistry with your mate. That is important. It's not everything, but it's important. But I think a, a woman I would marry, she kind of would know how to move around you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But when it does happen, it needs to be good, and I think that is important. You can't just overlook that. When it happened, it need to be good. Yeah, but it's so all you have about to have like sexual it's like yo, we not just like I'm a man, man. Like I'm kind of cool with like you know coming to crib. Maybe my bitch just got on, you know, a thongs, and I'm cool with that. I'm straight with that. You know what I'm saying? Like so, you good with the Walmart, Moo Moo? It don't matter. She's comfortable. You're comfortable. What? Like, she don't got to be all dressed like a French maid every day you come home from work, but she can have on, you know, the you know the T-shirt with the family reunion, stickers missing, it got holes and in it, she got a bonnet on. Shit, she could do that shit here and there. We not doing that shit every night. Not the family reunion Yeah, t-shirt. we're not doing that. We're not wearing 90s, hey, nah, nah. Like, sometimes just give a nigga that fail. You know, nigga might turn over and want just fuck, like, but... You got to definitely um, give that, but a lot of women, you got to respect men, men that done 
been through shit, seen shit, lived shit. Been through a bunch of pain. Gave his best. You know what I'm saying? Like, he gave his best strokes in his 20s and 30s. Now you're in your 50s. Calm down, bitch. I didn't had all the pussy in the world. Oh, like what? I'm saying, <laughs> what more do pussy become? Like, like I said, it's not everything. I'm agreeing with that, like, but it's like when y'all are done. And then you got to think in the 90s, we was kind of fucking very take like, a drink. 11, 12 in the 90s. Was fuck it. Every time he say in the 90s, you have to take a drink. You know what I'm saying? Him. Like, in the 90s, niggas was motherfucking really, like, fucking early. So it's a little bit different. By 16, you got to think, I had kids at 16. Shout out the babies. You know what I'm saying? Shout out both of my sons. Free my young boy. You already know what time it is. You know what I'm saying? But, yeah, like, you got to think by 16, I had kids. So do you think about what I was doing? Then I had one BM that had her own crib. Think about how we was fucking a night. You know what I'm saying? Hey, um, young stroke. She smacking that big ass all over me like, you know what I'm saying, nigga? Young and like, okay, that's what I'm that's saying. Life. I had ass before niggas was getting ass. Like, when niggas was fucking bitches' backs out, I was really fucking bitches' From the back, ass jiggly, just you know what I'm saying? Like, okay. this is when niggas wasn't even thinking my asses. Niggas was like, "Yo, she got nice titties." Like, I never been oh, a titty. Nigga. Oh my god, you remember that? I mean? oh, when niggas used to oh just be god. on titties, like no one cared. Who nobody had... cared about ass in the nineties, <laughs> like nobody. That's why ninety niggas. If you see a lot of them, niggas chicks don't got asses. She might be pretty as shit. But that wasn't the whole thing, like, and not that she won't have ass, but that shit won't be explosive. Like, niggas don't be giving a fuck about that shit. Niggas be like, where this bitch had at? You know what I'm saying? Like, now, bitches is 18 getting their body done. You know what I'm saying? Like, and this is because of the pressure of just having an ass. Like, I think about how many fucking girls, bitches, you see they ass and bitches be, yo, cut that shit out. That having you your ass a- out with your kid behind you, stop oh. that shit, man. Oh. That shit ain't even what I... And I'm an ass nigga. I love looking at y'all bitches. Some of y'all bitches killing them. Fuck with y'all. But when it be shorty in the back oh. running around and... Oh. Nah, stop that shit, man. Oh. Like, you know what I'm saying? Oh. Sorry. I think this little bitch was in Kentucky. I hate dead she air, but I... She in there having a whole fucking... Twerk session? Whole joint. Kid just in the back. Keep trying to come in the camera. She keep moving this nigga. I'm like, I can't watch this If you this know shit. anything about me, you know I'm it. hardly ever speechless, but that, that throws me. That throws me. That throws uh, me. Just be for real. And I understand you get your bride. You, you know I'm one of them. I agree totally. I don't give a fuck how you make your money. Make it. Let the money make you. What's that from? You know what I'm saying? This ain't Players Club. Okay. You know what I'm saying? But okay. I am something like Dollar Bill. Bitch, <laughs> when you see that green light, you hear me? <laughs> you yeah, that. that. Easy and button. Yeah, that easy at that shit. He was like, buddy, buddy. Now that was the shit bitches was coming out of lockers, nigga. That's how you <laughs> know it's true. Oh, my God. When bitches are sliding through lockers, and then when the nigga, the owner of the club, slide through a locker right in the bitch room, oh, you know he for real with his. He doing some pimping. He damn sure ain't doing no general management shit. Not no house manager like Jeffrey. Anyway, oh, we missed one birthday. I was going to wait to the end, but I don't want to forget because it's unforgettable. Whose birthday is it? Y'all watch me on 911. Who is Mari Stars? <laughs> um, I got to look at when that man's birthday is. Shout out to the dog, man. You already know. You see the Blanco shit in the corner. You already know what time it is, man. Happy B Day to the boy, man. Happy birthday, Millie's. Putting nope. on for mass. I know you going to show your ass, man. You already know how niggas do. He be showing his ass, too. That nigga be fresh as shit and some more shit. Real shit, he one of the few niggas that like, hey, picture, it's some wild shit, and he be having the wild colors on. Shout out a grown man giving another grown man they flowers for they drip. It's okay, brother. Yeah, what's the name one of them boys, too? I tell niggas that. Day's one of them niggas. 
got shit fucked up if you think you can fuck with that nigga, man. That nigga go hard, hard. Like, that's a nigga you can really tell a 90s kid. That nigga live for that shit. That's one thing. Call that nigga whatever. You won't call that nigga not fresh. No bullshit. Days be, you know, you know how niggas give it up. Word. Days was one of them kids even in the 90s. Um, nigga was fresh as hell. Like, you can always, I tell niggas that. A lot of niggas, when you know their first name, you know a nigga was fresh. Not the first name. No bullshit. Even with me, how a lot of niggas know, you know how niggas was rock for niggas to know you. Your name and then know your tag, yeah, you was one of the boys. Yeah, remember the tag, your name and your t- Oh my gosh. Niggas still be having tags. <laughs> take a drink. Because in the 90s, um, we got to talk about this. I was up in the air about it because I literally hate sex tapes. I hate nudes. Unless all parties involved have given consent for the images or the video to be released. But recently we had like a influx of sex tapes or videos with sexual activity. The first one was Nelly. Um, the second one was Lil Homie from Love and Hip Hop, and he was in that group. You know, Lil mm-hmm. Homie. Y'all know what this is. Lil, Lil Fizz, Lil, Lil Fizz. B2K, I was yeah. Ready to say that too. I don't know what this is, but that's what I was. <laughs> Fizz on some G shit. And um, the boy Isaiah. Now, all three of them, in my opinion, I must say that are dead ass wrong. Unless everyone involved gave consent for these images to be released, I'm not sure. But the last one, I saw a piece of the video. Time out. No, I don't view sex tapes because I feel like that's like weird as shit. But I saw a video and there was no sexual activity um, with this one. But people were saying that um, he was getting oral sex from another man. Two things I don't understand. One is if he just showed the top of his body, how the fuck do anybody know what's happening? That's what I said. I didn't see everything, but just scrolling by, I saw it and scrolled by real quick. And if maybe niggas is like, yo, it sounded like some niggas in the back. I mean, is he weird for living his life, or are you weird for really being that much Invested. into his fucking video? Like, for you to be saying what you heard. Like, it was niggas like, yo, you seen that drool coming in? Like, Ooh. my nigga, you was looking Ooh. like, would be. Yep, I, details? Yeah, I be really thinking. Motherfuckers Ooh. talking about that on Clubhouse, and I really be thinking like, yo, um, what what the hell be wrong with dudes really? So you know how many times you had to watch it to see something like right. that? Right, like. <laughs> And then it almost got me to watch it that many times to see if I say it like, no bullshit. But then I'm like, nah, I can't be invested. And that's what I be saying to myself now. Certain shit I'm not even going to be invested in. Because if you watch it once and then you hear something else, you got to watch it again. To see you. And then you got to watch it. Then when part two come out. And then if you just never watch, you do not invest it. So when two, three come out, you could be like, fuck all one, two, and three. But I think we need to stop doing that. And if we're at a time that where it's peace, love, and happiness, then why would motherfuckers be feeling a way about what anybody's doing with a man, a woman, a woman, and a woman, a man with a... Like, if it's all peace, love, and happiness, then we should be at a point where we just let motherfuckers live. So at some point, like, we got to figure out what we doing. Are we bashing? Or are we loving? Or are we loving? Because if we loving, okay, cool, let's do that, though. And that goes for everybody you have to be loving to. We can't pick who we going love and, yo, Tim Tebow came out, he's gay. Oh, let's clap and everybody love him. But then he come out, it's like, oh, nah, this nigga I'm not music and his music what's anymore. What's the name? And I don't even know why she talking, cause she one of them motherfuckers, what motherfuckers that can't separate the music from a person. I actually life. can. You can't cause you don't listen to R. Kelly. We just talked. So that's about why that. I can separate because I used to like his music until no, I saw but you what would he still did. Still like it because his music still hit. Because this is what I'm saying. The same thing. If he's gay, what is wrong with him still making street music? I don't see the problem with that. If R. Kelly's a rapist, what's wrong with him making you know why? club music? Because 
being a rapist and or a chomo is different from someone being an adult and in, in, in engaging in adult sexual activities. Well, we don't know what activities they was, but just like we don't know his. But I feel at some point, um, I understand we have these. Um, sometimes people need to look up what a fan is. Okay. And I keep saying sometimes if people knew what a fan was, I don't think they would use the word fan or call themselves a fan. Let me look up the definition. You know what I'm saying? And that's one thing. What's another? Stop putting these your inner feelings in people. Like, if you like music from, you like acting from, you got to separate, you know, Denzel from motherfucking Training Day. Like, you can't be, he's this individual because he played that part in Training Day. That is a job. He played a million parts. You know he played John Q. Like, you know he's not John Q. You know he really didn't save no kid of his. Or take the hospital hostage. Like, we have to start separating the difference in people. If people are good at what they do as a talent, then let's love that and respect that. But isn't and when it, they don't deliver on that, then have a problem. But in people's personal life, stay the fuck out of people's per It's cool for us to even But what if it have, comes out? Aren't, if it comes out, aren't people allowed to say... You know what? I can't get jiggy with that, even if the shit bops, or even if the actor is acting. No, because the one thing that um, and I was watching this, and that's what made me say it to you earlier. If you are a U.S. citizen, you have due process. Any U.S. citizen, don't matter where you are, you could get caught up in Afghanistan. You, as a U.S. citizen, when it come to here, you have due process. Nobody is guilty and then proven innocent. And this is how the world lived. So much the court system lived like that up until like the end of the 90s to where now we adopted that. We adopt when we hear something, this shit just is what it is. And then there's a doc, there's a show about that on, I don't want to say the one of them streaming sites. It's called what? Trial by Media. I, mean, right. I shouldn't even say that. Right. But yeah. That's what it's called. But, um, yeah, shit like that. Like, we convict people before we hear the all out. But then all of us is guilty of hearing something about a person we know, a brother, a father, whoever, and then say, oh, no, nah, that's lies. So why would they lie on your people's or your family but then tell you the truth about somebody else's family? Like, so we going to look at them crazy and we just know, yo, listen, shit, it's due process. Anybody can, and, and this is the one thing people don't understand. Yo, anybody can be locked up for anything. Anything. It's just about how much they want to force the law. There is damn near a law for anything we do. They can force the issue in. Come here, you're arrested. And I always say that I used to make jokes when I used to um, piss outside a lot. That's Yo, you can a, register yes. for that. Yes. And then I used to always say that when I be with a female and I'd be like, watch my back. And she'd be like, why you want me to watch you? You a man. So you can explain this shit to motherfuckers when I get locked up. Nah, he was taking a piss. Because if not, that's some shit I couldn't explain. Niggas would be like, nah, nigga, you registered? Nigga, imagine that nigga got to register because he took a piss outside of Franklin Park. I actually know someone in my personal life that caught one of those indecent exposure joints for peeing outside this is what i'm t like i know because i know somebody too and that's what i'm trying to say like if you not up on game they can give you in and, and that's what i'm not even gonna say that's what they do they give us anything and we take most it. of us take it and just regurgitate that shit to whoever about whoever wherever like we put these things on the news really on people's jacket like, not even to say, yo, I think from my point of view, this. Now, nah, niggas be like, nah, yo, boom, 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 I'm telling you he did. Fox 25 said he did. Fox, who the fuck is Fox 25? Damn motherfucker, like, any one of us that felt we a journal and we going to chase a story. We put the story together by what we think makes sense and what we think our readers want to want to take in. That shit ain't about the truth. Like, stories don't be the truth. 
I speak the truth. Shout that shit be for the readers. All the readers that they know you want to hear something juicy, some gossip. Let's give them this. So let's start doing our homework. Let's stop putting shit on people. Let's stop finding out the truth. And if anything, fucking niggas feel they want to investigate, investigate them. But make that decision yourself before you just hear some shit and then throw it on somebody. And if I ever did it to anybody, yo, I apologize for that shit. Because I ain't going to say I never did it in my life. But any niggas, you know, and I'm talking about people I really know. You know what I'm saying? Fuck all that, like, industry shit. I apologize. Because it's like, yo, we all do it. But at some point, we have to learn to, yo, look into shit. Figure shit out. Yo, is this shit for real? You know what I'm saying? And his ways about that. All right. We got off a little bit. You want to hear what the definition of a fanatic is? A fanatic is a person filled with excessive and single-minded zeal, especially for an extreme religious or political cause or entertainment. And what is the one word they said in it? Um, extreme or zeal. Oh, uh, a person that have one track mind. It's not. Yeah, I, I said a person filled with excessive and single-minded zeal. Single month. That means no matter what the hell somebody tell you about another team, it's never going to add up. Like, that means, and that's what I'm saying. You should know, for one, if you're single-minded about anything, you're out of your fucking mind. Like, if a person can't talk to you to even just get you to, you are, and then think about that now as a person having that for a person. That you don't know. I'm about to say whether you do or don't, but especially if you don't. And and motherfuckers don't even have that for their mother and father. And will have that for Michael Jordan. Not the father. Motherfuckers will have that for LeBron James. A Jay Z. Yo, nah, niggas will really get into fights and a bunch of shit over their life. Over two niggas probably don't even give a fuck about what y'all talking about or which one of the y'all even believe. You know what I'm saying? Like, think about you as a fanatic, what that shows about yourself. To be a fanatic for anything. I see him damn near fisticuffs over sports. Everybody that watched this show, this shit is a family joint. This shit ain't no niggas is fans like fuck. No, I don't want no fans. And I ain't never going to be no motherfucking fan of nobody. Like, period. I fuck with niggas in the same way I want so people what's the to other word? get with me. You don't want to, like, for example, you fuck with... Lil Wayne, for example. Lil Weezy like family. You don't know that man. That nigga still like family. So you're just stepping on your own words right now. No. You don't know I look that at man. Him more like I would never see Weezy and pass out. Fuck no. I okay. would never see Weezy but you're over a, extend my hand. Fuck no. So you're a fan. No, that's why I said we like family. You're not. Because like I might just family. hit the nigga with the head now and keep it pushing. That's you, like family. You don't know that man? So you're a fan. So what's a what's Fuck a better? No, I'm not a all fan. right, what's a better word? Because it ain't family. Because you don't know them. Well, it's like family. Because when think about it, you say how a cousin grew with Wayne. I grew with Wayne. The fuck are you talking about? Like word the same way these people if they grow with us five years, like that's more than like my aunt or somebody would speak to me. It's certain cousins don't speak to me that much. It's people on here that see me and you more than a bunch of motherfuckers that probably want to see us in real life sees us. But they wouldn't be fans? No. Oh. It's like a family. You're growing with me. We're building. We, we, we building something. We not just no motherfuckers taking or thinking y'all should just take our word. I always say that. Should I say? Look into that shit. Nine out of ten is wrong. Look into it. I'm never the dude trying to be like what I say is God. Yo, well, Kraft said. Bow down. Nah, 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 Kraft nigga, said I could put my bitch through the nigga, table. Nigga, listen. Don't even use my <laughs> shit with nobody. You know what I'm saying? It was just a prank. No bullshit. Don't even be like, yo, the nigga Kraft said I'm not a good nigga to use for the argument. You know what I'm saying? Like, niggas have to start. And that's what I'm saying. It's cool to like and fuck with somebody's moving and love what they doing. But it's like a motherfucker knowing me as a podcaster and kicking it with me. It's like, you can't judge me for the shit I like doing but behind the scene. You know what I'm saying? Like, as long as I come here and I deliver and I'm on point and I ain't fucking up and I ain't doing nothing to hurt nobody out there or 
Well, then you just stepped on your words again. You come here and you do a good job and you do a good job at it. But if you walk out the door and he did not do this. I'm just using him as an example because it's me and him. If you walk out of this door, we had a great episode and we posted it and everyone loves it. And you walked out on the street and a bitch said, no, you can't have my number and you beat her up. So no one should feel that way about you because you're a great podcaster. Nah, motherfuckers should feel for one. Let me see what he say. And let me see what's up with homie to figure out what's wrong with them doing this shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Stop just giving up on people for some shit. People that you like or you fuck with or you love. Figure out what's up with them. That's what I mean. Like, motherfuckers got to stop looking at just soon as I have it. Nah, so what? Just look. Nah. Everybody's threshold for BS is different. So you got some people that'll be like, well, I didn't see what happened. I need to know what happened. I'm not just going to write him off because somebody said he beat the bitch up outside. Now, if there's video of the interaction in now entirety. We to, now we need to find out before. Because, like, say a person like that, you fuck around and leave a person, can throw this person more into a fuck. Up. So why not be the, the real person you are that love this person? Figure out, yo, how the fuck can I help? How can I get him to help himself? I think because, like I said, everyone's threshold for for negativity is different. Well, I feel if, if it took me to be the bitch out for you to get away, then you really ain't fuck with me anyway. Whatever you want, however you want to say That's it. That's a fact. Because if, even if my own, I have many siblings, even if my own brother was had evidence that he beat up a girl because she said no i don't want to give you my number and there's video evidence of it or even take it further if there's evidence that my own brother sexually assaulted a girl i don't have nothing for you but that's just my threshold and if that a, makes me look to, like a, a fucked up person then that's just he, what it is i would try to see what up with him I really would. Like, I'm more into that. Like, you know, um, if you're a motherfucker, I fuck with, I fuck with you. You know, it's people that, me and people that um, don't speak on the regular shit, I still love them niggas. I still fuck with them niggas. Like, you know what I'm saying? As far as, like, at the end of the day, you know, but um, to really just write a motherfucker off, nah. You know what I'm saying? Because I What's know. What's your bottom line? Do you, is there anything that anyone can do that is in your circle or your life that you would be like, absolutely not? For, for me, it's. Um, you know, sexual assault of any kind or rape of any kind. That's my threshold. I don't know you. I don't need to know you. I don't care to know you anymore, no matter what our relationship is. That's just my bottom line. What's yours, if you have one? Um, I really can't say because, like I said, it's all about how shit's done, you know, um, but I can't think of nothing off top that just make me be like, yo, fuck one of my homies. You know what I'm saying? Like, even if one of my homies caught a rape case, like, I couldn't see me off top just being like fuck with the nigga and with me it would still go down to like if I believe this shit cause I know one of my niggas could lose at the hoop and really didn't do this shit even losing at the hoop ain't mean like yo you was guilty so a lot of niggas right now innocent went to the hoop nigga and they really didn't do that shit like I'm not with that um you know um Shit, man, I think about so much shit that I did. Imagine if um, my moms, my grandmoms, or, you know, the females that a motherfucker gave up on me because of a case I caught or, you know, whatever happened. And I know how police is. Everything that you get arrested for ain't no shit you did. And I, all the time when you go to court and you are found guilty, that means you was guilty. <clears throat> and I believe more niggas get found guilty that are innocent than niggas that are guilty. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's just the reality of it. Like, when it comes to shit like that, like, nah, motherfuckers got to start really seeing what up. And like I said, man, you should know your friend, whoever you're dealing with, you should be able to sit down and kick it, hear it out, how this shit sound to you. Now, one thing's different if you really feel, okay, yo, he did it, and boom, 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 yo, I'm cool, I'm going to remove myself. Cool, you have that right. 
But even with that, it ain't no, yo, I got to really run around with the, yo, you know, Johnny a rapist and did it like, nah, I'm cool. What, what benefit do that get me other than trying to just shit on you and put you down? Well, if I was seriously found guilty, not by just the court, but there's evidence against me that I did such a thing. If someone was running around and saying that about me, it's true. Can't get mad about that. I don't give a shit if I was throwing salt. You know Johnny's a, a, a molester. She's not. But just using myself as an example. If there's evidence and I did it, oh, well, if somebody says it, you know what? I should have never did it. Nah, that shit, um, that's what I'm saying. I think um, when... What comes after the act that you committed, what happens after that is fair game because you did the thing. Nah. If you were a raper... And you were convicted of it, and it is proven, not just in the court of law, there's proof of this thing, or child molester, whatever the case is. What happens after that doesn't matter. Now, if I would go around with a sign that says, John Doe is a rapist, there's proof of it, here's the picture right here. I if I um, do that, it don't matter. He should have never did it. I don't really, um, I don't I don't subscribe to that. Like I tell people, man, they deal with shit on individual basis on how you feel from it. You know, um, I got a close friend. There's some shit that nobody rocked with. I heard this shit. I ain't feel it. I kept it pushing. I don't speak about the nigga and all the other shit. Like, it ain't. My life moved on. I'm content where my life is. Maybe if I was a nigga that was running around and still fucked up, then that would be with me moving on. It's like for me to just be. It's like, that's what I'm saying. I would have to. What the fuck are you getting out of it? I would have just wanted shit on this nigga. Once you come to a conclusion, that shit's all that matter to me. I'm cool. Fuck everybody else that even feel like, nah, you know what? I fuck with it. I'm straight. I might look at you a little weird. Oh, no, nah, I can't fuck with you neither. But I'm not even talking about both of y'all being together and how y'all chill with each other. I don't give a fuck. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's not me. I, that's why I feel a lot of things have to do with where your mental is, where you are in your life, your personal life. Because I feel when life is moving for you and, you know, you feel shit leveling up or whatever have you. I don't think you, you know what I'm saying? That's kind of with anybody. You like, fuck it. Even your ex chick, yo, she fucking, oh, all right, cool. I even feel when niggas be wild over that, it's like your life's not going nowhere. Because when your life, it's like, all right, even if you do feel some way you feel cool, I'm just about to keep it pushing. You don't feel you have to run around with the, yo, where she fucking that, that bitch, man, da 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 da. For what? And that's what I'm saying, too. We need to start letting each other move the fuck on and, you know, get out of shit gracefully. You know what I'm saying? Like, we have to stop thinking that we have, like, a say-so. We can have an opinion, but a say-so in, like, what people do. Uh. And when it come to my friends, I feel me and my friends' business is me and my fucking friends' business. Shit ain't got nothing to do with nobody else, so what the fuck I look like telling a motherfucker anyway? I feel even when you do that after y'all friends, it make y'all look corny. Like, it don't even matter if y'all don't speak. That shit's whack as shit. You better off just moving the fuck on. He better off moving the fuck on. Or whatever have you, you know what I'm saying? Because like I said, even as a homie... Or whatever, you're a person that I once had love for. We once really fucked with each other. Kids probably know, you know what I'm saying? However it go. So I would get the fuck away from you before I try to do harm or do something, even kill your image or whatever have you. Fuck all that. Love. Just because I don't fuck with you or don't like you don't mean I don't want you to never have a way to eat again. Or... You know what I'm saying? Like, nah, that's not what I'm looking for. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not looking to stop shit in people's life. I hear you. But, like I said, if you're a raper or a child molester. Once I start busting these YouTubers' asses, man, like, I'm not looking for niggas shit. to lose no bread or none of that shit. Like, when I bust your ass, I'm going to bust your ass on, like, what we do. We part or we, you know what I'm saying? We snap back and forth. Other than that, shit ain't no shit a nigga trying to take personal and be trying to fuck a nigga life up all like Nah, that shit ain't that serious. I'm snapping. Remember snaps on Well, so niggas got to learn how to snap and take shit and let's vibe. Like, that's manly shit. You remember that show, though? Yeah. 
snaps. Yeah. Wasn't that like a Def Jam joint? It was like Def Jam BET, one of them. And it had all the ill comedians. Yeah, like I think it was like week. a knockoff of um, Def Jam, because that's what hardly me why that shit didn't last. Yeah, it was like Monique and them. It was funny. But anyway, um, speaking of friends, y'all know that Rona, I don't want to say the whole name, get us flagged. In Massachusetts, I don't know about anywhere else just now. In the great state of Mass, the Commonwealth, as of, was it today or yesterday? That today. Today. If you want to go, I, we went to a place and there was, you can come in and get your food, but if you want to sit down, you must show your card. Not going to say the name of that card. You know what it is. Um, but now, if you want to go inside a place, restaurant, club, bar, sporting facility, gym, you must show that you have had that. I don't know if I can say it, so you know what that means. And you have to show the card to go in these places. I'm on the fence about it, but now it's to the point where people can't really go places. And now for the people that don't want to get this, are you going to do it? That's why I be telling you if everybody was to just... Say, I'm not doing Level it. up and stick together. No bullshit. They gonna have to let niggas in the door. Niggas, they done let the GDs in the door. They done let them GDs in the door. No bullshit. Like, because at the end of the day, like, think about it. Niggas stop going and shit, man. Shit shutting down. How long do you think after we just went through that crazy wild shit people got time to play about no service? Motherfuckers ain't got no time to play about no service. So what's going to happen is, like you said, places are shutting down because people are not conforming to that, and they don't want to go to these places and spend their money. Wow. So this Commonwealth is not going to get that cash, so you know what's going to happen? <laughs> Joe Byron shut it down, bing bong. And they don't want that either because they don't want to pay people to stay home. So what are you going to do? And it's really fucked up Government. because, you know, um, It show it show how little they look at all of us, and they should have this is everybody in the world to where they feel they can put that shit on us like that. Like I'm not for or against anything, but there's no shit you can force on the people. Like that's not what up. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm not, and I'm not. I don't give a fuck which way you go, but to, for something to be mandated, now nah, that's a problem. There's nothing in this world that should be mandated to everyone. Like, nothing. Nothing should be like that. Um, but they damn sure won't mandate no money to us. They won't mandate no motherfucking money to everybody in the world, but they would mandate we do some shit to get money or we do some shit to keep our doors open or whatever have you. And that's what I'm saying. Like, it's crazy open. how... Um, and see, this is what I be saying about even us as small businesses having meetings like they were supposed to come and get that yo listen not only are y'all going against but now y'all going against us too because now it's putting us in a bond you know how many people not coming in here because we got to ask everybody this and then you know what type of shit you putting us into about the people that like you said feel strong about it for one of my employees to have to ask a person yo let me see your papers it's mad unsafe uh. i work in the service industry not going to, you know, get into it, but I work with people and I feel unsafe having to ask somebody that because you don't know if you'll get one to be like, well, bitch, I don't know. And now it turns into a thing. That has happened. Y'all see the videos. It really happens. Telling you so it's like yo i think we need to start standing up because that dude that puts like all of us in a crazy bond. You know what I'm saying? Like, and... I don't even know how much, like, longer just the world. Like, motherfuckers out of time to play these games with them. Like, real well, shit. Like, not well, even well, yet. Like, I don't know how long they think niggas got time to be closing shit and not people ain't coming in. And that's really fucking when. Then you got to think, COVID went hella long than anybody thought. You know what I'm saying? So you got to think after coming off that and then they baby stepped us into how many people could be in the sun and coming. So now this, and this should say something like motherfuckers should. You know, I was thinking about that too this morning when I was reading it. Should start gearing up for going back in. 
I'm telling you, it they're not going to have a choice. Whoa. So all this crap, so it's not a secret. I, I tend bar. I'm a bartender. There's going to come a point where they was trying to avoid paying people to stay home like these other countries. Literally paying their, um, paying them plus uh, food and medical. Paying them to stay home and get these numbers down. They don't want to do it for us because they need that money coming in in these, in these places. Tell you. They're going to shut them down. These places are going to shut down, not going to make no money, and guess what you're going to have to do? Pay us. And then it's even dumb as shit when you just... I believe that. I think it's dumb as shit when you just put all that money in the street at one time. That shit is just stupid. It needs to be... I mean, there's no... This is unprecedented. We, we can agree to that. This has never happened to us in this lifetime. It's happened before in ancient times. But this is unprecedented for us in our lifetime. It's going to take time to, for them to figure it out, but you got to figure it out faster. I'm telling you, at some point, well, like, got to start figuring it out. Got to start bonding together. Got to start speaking up. Like, somewhere in this world, like, we all got to get a voice. That's why I be saying, like, at this point in the world, I don't give a fuck about no black, white, Asian, Chinese, hey, niggas is all people. I don't, I don't be giving a fuck about none of that. I could care less what you are on how I deal with you if you're a friend of mine. Any like, I don't have them barriers and none of that shit. I feel we all need to be on point because this shit affects all of us. Like, this shit ain't just going to affect black people. It ain't going to just affect white. This shit affect all. We all was in the crib. The world was in the crib. We all was as one. Wasn't nobody no different in that moment. It didn't give a fuck how much money you had, no nothing. You and your family was in that crib. So it's like, yo, we need to definitely start looking at these things, man, and, like, start having a voice. That's why I say it's good to attend community meetings, um, small business meetings, like, you know, especially shit that you're in the area of. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got a business in Dorchester that you should be going to Dorchester meetings, like, those type of things, even as us, because there's a lot more um, urban black businesses that opened up over the last two, three years. And that's something we got to get into. Like, if we really trying to do business, we got to get into doing business. We got to do this shit the right way. We got to do this shit how everybody else do it to be involved and to really get where we are going. You know what I'm saying? Because there's no reason to have grand opening, grand closing. Grand opening. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, yo, we got to really start, like, getting to these meetings, speaking up. Speaking up on account of other um, businesses. You know, when it come to everybody and doing shit, ain't about no black, Puerto Rican. No, this shit is we all get money in this circle. And we need to figure out a plan to where we can all still get some money. Because it ain't like if this shit next door shut down, how long you think I got? You next. Like, that shit be the reality. It ain't like when you see somebody close down, you thinking like, oh, they just closed. No, that means you on a clock. You know what I'm saying? So we do. We need to think about these things, man, and start showing love to these small businesses and supporting them and 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 getting to them instead of going to all these big chains man like i think about over the year we done had situations with motherfucking so many big ass corporations that we just keep going back to niggas find some way to go back no matter how they say fuck us as the people we find a way to go back and it shouldn't be about, it should be about, yo, you disrespect anybody that's a fucking customer. Nobody's coming back. Don't fucking matter, like, oh, like, this shit's stupid too. How, yo, they, this shit was some white shit, or some black, or some Asian, like, uh, when something happened, niggas need to step up if you really spend your money inside that establishment. Because, like I always say, them today, you them all. Jones being in the Gucci store. That shit was him today. That shit be somebody else tomorrow. That shit can get outrageous the next day for not speaking up on it. And then to think about how much money we give these places. Just give these places. Some motherfuckers go out their way, do a bunch of other shit to get the money to go in these places. And then to know they don't even respect you, they don't even nothing. 
I always tell people that I don't give a fuck where I'm at. If I don't feel good in it, I ain't spending my money in it. I don't give a fuck if it's a corner store. Nigga got one time to say some crazy, yeah, I'm never coming in. That's how I shut his eyes down. I ain't going to argue with this nigga at the store. Okay, fuck your business. Like, because I know how much we just go in the corner store and get Fonzos. You know how many fucking Fonzos they sell a day off? Niggas just going in the store getting Fonzos? Like, so if this person speak to a young kid, any young kid in the community, why the fuck wouldn't you? Hold on. What the fuck are you talking about? Because you got to think, without the community, this corner store could not last. Not function. Everybody in the five-block radius say, yo, we ain't coming to the store no more grand closing. Grand closing. Like a lot of shit in the community, it is why you think it's in the community because it's for the people. But if they ain't treating the people right, then yo, you gotta get that shit out of it. You know what I'm saying? It don't matter. That's why I be saying sometimes when I go in expressions, Evelyn's, them nigga like, yeah, you got these young kids and they just no, that make the business look bad. I don't fuck if I want to see forty sneakers. You work at a sneaker store. You were here to get motherfucking sneakers from 9 to 5. Your business hours are from. She ain't about when the fuck you want to show me sneakers. All right, Big Red. Like, motherfuckers got to start thinking about that shit. Like, yo, when we all take these jobs, we take on these responsibilities. Start treating niggas better, especially when it be, it be more fucked up when it's black people treating black people fucked up. Like, when you really go into Macy's and it be a black chick talking to you crazy or a black dude talking to you crazy, it's like, the fuck are you talking about? What? And then these big corps need to be um, paying their employees uh, appropriately, I think, as well. I think it's a cycle. You're paying your employees peanuts. You're hiring anybody that will take it just so they'll take it and they don't take their job serious. They don't have anything invested in it because you're treating them like shit as an employer, they're not getting paid properly from their employer. They don't give a shit. They will not come back the next day and not give you a warning they're not coming back. Why? Because they know they would never lose everybody as a whole. They know if they did, it's, it's piece by piece, and then they got time to replace that piece. They but that's what I'm saying. Ass, Mr. Postman. If motherfuckers is in Macy's and all the workers just say, yo, we leaving, they can't find 30 workers to just come right in right now. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like, motherfuckers don't be understanding. That's why I be saying that shit mean a lot when you see motherfuckers outside striking. They are striking for a motherfucking reason. They telling you this shit ain't fair, whatever it is. And that's what they feel all is coming together and ran. Nah, fuck that. We not doing this no more. And what do you hear? Usually they have some way that they negotiate with them and they give them whatever it is a little bit more than whatever it was like. But, no, nah, we got to start having negotiations about this shit. We got to start booting shit. Shit ain't moving the way we want it. Boot that shit. Like, and that's just the reality of it. It don't matter if it's a black business, white business, Puerto Rican business, Asian business. Like, that motherfucking Chinese place in Uppin's Corner. That motherfucking broad talk to niggas fucking crazy. Crazy. To where one night I had to smack the whole Jimmy Fun shit down. Like, yo, my nigga, fuck out of here. You in my neighborhood talking crazy. Bitch, you couldn't exist. You don't see Chinese people coming here to eat this food. The fuck are you talking about? <laughs> Not the Jimmy Fun that they put in their pocket. Hey, all them fucking quarters <laughs> in. No. Well, that's why they be mad when I walk in. They be like, you show 50 cents, I'll take it right out to Jimmy Fun. Boom. <laughs> they be like. Oh, you just take it from right, man. What the fuck are you talking about? Y'all do not put like, that yo, paperwork come on, in. You know the paperwork that goes behind that? Stop it. You're not doing it. Like, yo, man, we got to start waking up to this shit, man. We got to start, like, having say-so in our community. You know what I'm saying? And once that happened, then our community will look the way we want it to look. What else is on your bag, honey? Well, we going to wrap it up for another day. We are going to pack this up, man. We back at y'all, y'all see. We coming, we've been just trying to drop something on y'all every day and get y'all familiar that we still part of. We know we've been doing the interviews. Yes. Thanks to everybody showing the love, coming through, fucking with us, man. We've been having some good people to come through here. I'm everybody came through solid. Been showing nothing but love. I thank y'all for that, man. Um, And to those, I want to tell y'all too, when y'all come up here, yes, I know this is a platform. 
But when y'all come up here, we're going to drop the video. When we drop the video, it is your job to promote your video. Like, you have to promote this shit. You can't look at the numbers and be thinking, yo, we just going to keep uploading. Like, yo, you got to help. That's what I'm saying. Start helping in this shit, man. Start wanting your shit to work for you. Stop wanting somebody to make it work for you. Start like, okay, boom, he dropped my joint. Because everybody, I send it to you immediately as soon as it dropped. Shout out to Two Times, man. I think he, he been on this shit. Shout out to Slim Narcos. He been on this joint. You know what I'm saying? Like, Rel been moving his joint. Oh, yeah, you know black shit been going crazy. Everybody jumping at the yeah, bottom what? of that shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, dudes got to start believing in yourself. Start selling your shit. Once somebody partnership, because that's what this is. When you come up here, it's like a partnership. You take your half and do what the fuck you do. We going to take our half. We going to do what we do. Hopefully, we both got a way to take it and generate some bread from it. I'm not in control of what you do with it. You're not in control of what I do with it. So it's all love. It's a partnership. So at the end of the day, all I say is, yo, I want it to work. I want all these shits to hit. There's nobody come up that I'm like, nah, you know, nah, fuck that. We got with everything. Nigga, all gas, no brakes. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, it's like, yo, help that shit, man. Help push the car. That's what I'm telling you, man. Niggas got to start helping. Push these cars. Let's get this shit moving. Your job. And that's what anything you want, man. Push it. All right, Deacon Craft. That was a good talk for today. <laughs> the bullshit had to come in and drop some jewels. The Deacon. This is Stop Podcast. I'm Machine Gun Johnny. Until next time.